All right, welcome back to another in my series of dialing in videos. This is kind of a funny one. I hate to call it that, but I'm going to put it in, in this part of the series. Um, just a little recap on what this series was about. And I mentioned that back at the beginning. I started dialing in specific amps um, just to show people how I would quickly use only tools that are available to us in the Helix. Uh, and no 30, third party anything, basically not adding any, uh, you know, physical pedals into the Helix loops or the front of the Helix, not using third party IRs to create the sound, but only using the Helix itself to dial in an amp uh, very quickly. And, and what got me thinking about that is I would get comments on my videos <clears throat> on YouTube where folks would say, um, you know, oh yeah, sure, you, you do all this tweaking and, and all these, you know, crazy routing things and everything. I never really th thought of it that way. Uh, but some people felt that you couldn't just sort of dial in a, a really quick, easy tone. And so I thought uh, that's how that series started. But then I started getting a lot of requests to do specific artist tones or song tones. And, and I thought, well, okay, you know, and I, so I started with, uh, I think the first one I did was Alex Lyson's Limelight Tone which if anybody who's watched that video, um, they'll remember that I ended up with quite uh, a large number of EQ blocks uh, to really kind of shape that tone. Now, like I said in that video, was there other ways that could have been accomplished uh, to get that tone sounding that way? Quite possibly. There's always a bunch of ways, and I, I never try to pass it off like, that the way that I came up with it is the only way to do that. But, you know, it worked for me, and that's kind of my thought process on it. Now, one thing that I would love to see in the Helix at some point, I've even reached out to the, the folks uh, that I know at Line 6 and, and mentioned this, so who knows? I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I don't even know how easy it is to implement. But I would love maybe a multi-band, more band parametric EQ instead of just having three bands, but a fully adjustable, maybe six or seven band parametric EQ with fully adjustable high and low shelf frequencies, which would be really nice, which would uh, defeat the need for using the split crossover uh, technique that I uh, did a video about and that I use a lot. So, And that would also then probably mean we wouldn't need four or five EQ blocks like I, I sometimes do when I'm dialing some of these tones. But anyways, here was the real point of this video. Um, after I did that, a lot of people commented on YouTube and said, why didn't you just... Uh, capture an impulse response of all of those EQs. It would have been a lot easier to do or capture an impulse response of the EQ curve that maybe you analyzed uh, in Curve EQ, which is uh, an, a, an EQ within Cubase that I use sometimes uh, if there's a solo guitar part and you kind of see what the EQ curve of it is. And that's a very valid, uh, those are very valid statements to capture an impulse response of that, which should, in theory, on paper, um, you know, uh, basically bake all of those EQs into an IR, an impulse response, that we could then insert into one block within the Helix. Instead of using a speaker cab IR, we're basically using like an EQ IR, right? Um, which is the same thing, you know, really in the end of it all. Um, but my, my answer to that was always, yeah, that's fine. But what I'm trying to do here is use only the Helix and not have to resort to uh, external third party IRs or something else that was created. But it did bring up a good point. A lot of people then asked me, well, could you show us how you could go through the process of creating an IR from that. And I thought that really would make for a good video and would go well with this series for anybody who wanted to take a patch maybe that I have done or a patch of their own that they've dialed in that, that maybe does use a lot of EQs and just kind of bake that down into, uh, you know, bake, I use that word, not really accurate, but bake that down into uh, an impulse response so they have one little block and then it frees up all the rest of their paths um, and, and possibly even uh, DSP right? Uh, to use other effects and whatnot. So let's talk about that today. And I'll show you my, the process I would use to create an IR of it. And then um, even show you an example of a and, a and being it between um, one of my patches that had a whole pile of EQs on it, EQ blocks, and, you know, baking those into an IR. And then we'll go back and forth between the IR version and the EQ version. So it's kind of a cool video. I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope I'll be clear on how to describe all of this, okay? Um, so I'm gonna use my Limelight uh, patch. So let's go over to uh, HX Edit. We're gonna be bouncing around between a few things. I got a bit, a bit of a funny setup here. Um, so on HX Edit here, you'll notice, I just, just as a quick um, 
side point here. I have a whole extra path down here that has USB 3.4 in uh, uh, just a, a gain block and sending to one, two out. Th this is just a complicated setup. It has nothing to do with the patch itself. Uh, this is just because I'm recording over here on a second dot to get all the audio working so I can feed out of Cubase into that. This is more of a video production thing. So just ignore that bottom path. It has nothing to do and you're not hearing the effects of anything uh, within Helix. The, what we are hearing is these paths up here, everything above this sort of uh, fourth path down here, I guess we'll call it. Okay, so just ignore that. That's, that's strictly for this video and for my video production uh, needs here, okay? So here's basically the limelight patch that I came up with. And if you count here, I have, now I've had to move things around a bit just to make room um, for the IR block that I'm gonna input later here and whatnot. So, um, so it is just basically the same uh, patch as I shared on custom tone with all these EQs. So if you notice, I have one, two, three, four, five parametric EQs. Now, obviously this is taking up a lot of room in our pass. And the idea, the whole goal here is to amalgamate those into one IR that we can then just slap on our path and get rid of all those, okay? So let's start this out. So, so here's my patch. I've got all these EQs. I've got all these crazy cuts and boosts and you know everything going on. Like I, like I detailed, I'm not gonna go into the in depth into that. I detailed that in my Limelight video if you wanna go back and check that out, it's on my channel. And maybe I'll even try to link below to it. Um, so we have uh, all of these EQs that we want to replace with an IR. So how do we do that? Well, we have to create an IR. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we need a piece of software uh, that's going to allow us to create the IR and one that is available online. Now, this is not a free uh, piece of software. This is called Vo by a company called Voxango and it's the Deconvolver. Now, this is, I believe, a, I don't know, don't quote me, $50 or $60 piece of software. If you notice down here, it says demo version, right? I'm using the demo version. I have never had a real need for uh, this software, and therefore, I haven't purchased it. Um, I may. If I find that I'm going to start doing this more often, I will absolutely purchase I'm a huge, huge supporter of paying for software that we're going to use in supporting these companies because they, there's so many great plug-in companies and software companies and I encourage everybody to do the same thing. If this is something you're going to use, uh, please think about, you know, paying for the software and helping to support these companies and doing what they're doing. Um, so anyways, what this does is it, it, first step is if we're using Voxango Deconvolver, um, I think the uh, demo version limitation is every time you open the program, it allows you to make three IRs and then you have to shut the program off and then to use it again, you got to restart it. So they kind of do allow you to use it unlimited in a, in a sense, right? But just with the inconvenience of having to restart it. But again, like I said, if you're going to use it on a regular basis, I would encourage everybody to just purchase it and... And then uh, it's yours and Voxango can put those funds towards developing further cool tools that'll help us to do what we need to do. Um, so first thing we have to do, it has a, it has a great uh, feature in it called Test Tone Generator, okay? So we hit that and what we see here is 24-bit uh, depth, that's what I'm working with, a sample rate of 48,000. We can check 44.1K uh, and all the way up to 192,000 hertz. I'm working at 48. So we can just leave it at that. We want it to be mono and I'm doing a duration of 12 seconds. So this is going to generate a, uh, a test tone, which the deconvolver is then going to use uh, in conjunction with, well, the next step that we're going to take uh, that I'll show you in a second. Now I've already generated a tone, so I have that already. And you can see up here, it says test tone file. So I save that to my desktop and the, the file is labeled sweep-48. 1000 24-. So you see what it says. Sweep uh, 48,000 is the sample rate to 24 bits. It's mono and it's 12 seconds long. Okay. We're going to come back to this in a minute. So what I do then is I go over to Cubase. All right. So here's what I use. Now, we have Cubase and what we're going to do is we're going to add, and you could use any DAW for this whatsoever. There's no nothing saying that you have to use Cubase for this. Okay. So um, I'm going to add a track. <clears throat> and it's going to be a mono track. I just need the one track, and there it is. And I'll just label this test tone since, uh, and if I spell that right, it's even better. Uh, 
uh, label that test tone, and I'm going to import um, an audio file, and I put that on my desk. If you notice, there's my audio file, sweep 48,000. That's the one we needed, okay? Um, now, I've already tested this before to see how it works, so uh, I'll just say put the new one in there, and there it is, okay? There's my test tone. Let, let's listen to what this sounds like, all right? Here's what the test tone will sound like. Okay, so it's a sweep through all the frequencies. So it's gonna sweep through, and that's what's gonna allow the deconvolver to then um, create its IR using this. Okay, but here's the thing. Alone, that's not doing anything because that's just a plain old sweep of a bunch of frequencies, right? So I'm gonna use, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna put in Helix Native, since I have that on my program. Now, or on my, my computer here and within Cubase. So um, here's Helix Native. Let me just maybe enlarge this a little bit so we can uh, see a little bit better. Um, let me see, I do, okay, good. So I have Limelight, my Limelight patch in here already. So this is the patch as I created it, um, as you heard in my old video that I did about dialing this patch in. The only thing we're interested in here is the EQs. We're trying to get rid of those, okay? So we're gonna turn everything else off. We're gonna turn distortion off. We're gonna turn the amp off. We're going to turn the compressor at the end off, the reverb, the delay. So all I'm leaving on are all of my reverb. Uh, my reverb. <laughs> all I'm leaving on are all of my EQ blocks. Now, I also have my split crossover set up here. I could also leave that on and bake that right into the IR as well, and that would and then come and remove this later. But for, for this purpose, I'm I'm going to uh, turn it off as well and leave it on in the in the uh, subsequent patch that we come up with uh, with the IR. So all I'm going to worry about are these five EQ blocks, which is going to bake in everything from my low and high cuts uh, to all those crazy EQ uh, changes I made. Oh, delay is still on there. Okay, so let's make sure every other block is off. So now when we feed any signal through this, what we're going to get back is um, simply that sw uh, sweep file, sending all the frequencies through it, being processed by just those EQs, and therefore that's what the impulse response is gonna capture, and that's what will be baked into that impulse response, if that makes sense. So kind of cool stuff, okay? Okay, so then what this is now going to allow us to do is to, as you noticed, I've inserted this onto an insert on my test tone. So now when I play back my test tone, now here's something you got to be careful of is levels here. This is going to boost the level of this uh, sweep. So I'm going to come in with my input here and I'm going to bring this down like to minus 20, just to make sure I can adjust that. I'm going to, I'm going to play the sweep through it and let's listen. Now this, what you're going to hear now is the sweep being processed just by these EQs. Okay. So let's listen. Okay. If you notice it clipped at the beginning, let me just play that again. See. Yeah, on my output meter, it seems to be getting close up to zero there. I could probably, I don't know, maybe go minus 17 on that. Let's just try that. Okay, so... As we can see, nothing clipped there. So let's just go with that and leave it for uh, what we need. So now what I need to do is I simply just need to export that being processed by native as we have it. And that's gonna give us a file that will have this same sweep 
of frequencies, but processed by the EQ, which the deconvolver can then use in conjunction with the original test tone and create an impulse response from it. I'm not an expert in impulse responses by any stretch. I understand probably just enough to be dangerous and to uh, misinform you guys. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, with, if you follow, you don't really need to understand the ins and outs of this to get it to work for you, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my uh, markers. And what I try to do at the end is leave a little bit of space Base, if you notice, I kind of like half a second or whatever after here, um, just so it's not cut off at all. Okay, so I'm then going to uh, export something called Limelight EQ Sweep, all right? Um, and we'll do this in real time. Notice I've checked off Mono Down Mix, so let's take a listen to this, and we'll export this. I've already tested this, so I've done it. I'm just doing it all again. So I'll overwrite it so we're using what, I, what we're doing right here. All right, and that's done. So basically we're all set there now. So if I now come over to, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to actually delete this file because that's the file we're gonna come up with again. So here, here we go, the Limelight EQ Sweep. This is the file we just created. And you can notice it was made one minute ago. I originally created an hour ago, but this is one minute ago now. So this is what we just created. Um, so now what we can do is we can come over to our Voxango Deconvolver software. I guess I can enlarge this a bit too. Now, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be an expert on what all of uh, these functions down here uh, do. But from my research, what we want to do is check off MP Transform. I believe the literature that comes with uh, Voxango Deconvolver says that it might give you more realistic results. I don't know. No idea. I'm going to check it off because it's worked for me in the past and we'll leave it at that. One thing we should do, I believe, and again, this is just from my research and I, I use it and it works. So normalize it to minus uh, 0.3 dBFS. Okay. So it's just going to normalize uh, the outgoing uh, wave of our IR. All right. Uh, set to 24 bit because so that out depth uh, is where I had it. So what we do with the test tone file is we point to the original unprocessed test tone that we had originally generated, and that's where I'm pointing to as the desktop, so that's fine. And then in this box here, what I need to do is I need to find the EQ sweep that we just made. So I've labeled this Limelight EQ sweep. So what it's going to do is compare the original unprocessed sweep to the processed sweep that I just told it to look at. It's gonna find the difference between those and create an impulse response that gives us just what those EQs were doing to the sound. So then theoretically, we should be able to put that in the path and have the exact same thing, all right? So now all we do is we simply go down and we hit process and it's going to go to the same folder that I have my original Limelight EQ sweep in, okay? And it's going to put our IR file in there. So let's do that process. That's it, it's done. That's how fast it happened, okay? So we can now go over and we notice there's another file here, Limelight EQ Sweep underscore DC. All right, and it's a WAV file, it's 70.7 .7 kilobytes uh, in size. And if you notice, that was just created right now at 11.45 a.m. I'm giving away when I'm shooting this video, April 5th. Um, so this now is our IR file, okay? So what we can do is we can now come back over to, we can close that down. We can come back over to HX Edit and come to our um, Limelight High Watt. Okay, now if you notice, I did some tests already, but I'm going to go to an empty uh, IR uh, slot, number 30. I've got to remember that. I'm going to import this EQ Sweep underscore DC. So there it is. So we want to remember number 30. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna throw an IR um, uh, impulse response block in here. And I'm gonna make sure that that is assigned to 30. All right. So now we want to be able to A, B back and forth. Obviously I don't want that on here on this snapshot because this is the snapshot that has all of the EQs on, okay? If you remember what I was using before showing you was within Cubase, that was native. So now I'm back to using my hardware uh, floor unit, okay? So um, 
I want to go to save that and I want to go to snapshot three and I'm going to name that uh, EQ IR. And what I'm going to do is keep the IR on and oh, it's already done here. Okay. So, and turn all the EQs off. So if you notice the patch is exactly the same, except all the EQ blocks are turned off. Okay. So if I go between the patch, the snapshot one, that's rhythm, we have the IR off all the EQs on and then snapshot three is EQs off and IR on. Now, theoretically, this should sound exactly the same. The only issue is, is the volume gonna be the same, right? So let, let's take a listen. Let me grab my guitar and let's see uh, volume wise, if I play the original. <laughs> Now we switch over to the IR. Okay, right off the bat, it's much quieter. So that's going to tell us nothing, as, you know, about whether the tones are the same, uh, because there's just too much of a discrepancy in volume. It's going to throw us off. We're going to be hearing that difference rather than if the tones are equal, right? So we can come down to I, my IR block here, and it says the level is set by default to minus 18 dB. So let's just bring that up to, I don't know, minus 8, and let's see what happens. So... <laughs> Go back to the other one. That seems pretty close. Now, if you really want to get particular about this, you could go into a DAW and uh, measure the uh, average uh, RMS uh, uh, level of this with a meter, whatever you want to make sure that they are exactly the same to really see if, if the sounds are identical, okay? Let me play a little bit with both of these and see what you guys think if you can tell the difference, okay? So here is the original patch with all the EQs. <laughs> Let me see about, sorry, I'm trying to see down where my foot switch is here. And here's the one with the IR. Let me play a bit, and I'm going to go back and forth between this seamlessly and see if you really notice much of a difference between the two. Start with the original. Uh, watch up on each X edit here when it bounces between rhythm and EQIR, and you'll see when I switch, and you can tell if you can hear a difference or not, okay? So here's the original first, and then I'll switch uh, back and forth, okay? But you guys, it's pretty close. I mean, it may be identical, and I don't even know if those volumes are matched. So maybe if there is a difference, that's what we're hearing. Um, so what an interesting way to go about this now, right? Um, so I could basically take this now and remove all of these EQ blocks, stick with just this IR, which is basically these EQ blocks baked into that particular IR, and I'm off to the races, and I've freed up, you know, what, in this case, five uh, blocks uh, that I could possibly add other modulation effects or delay effects or whatever I want to do with it, right? Which is quite handy, and uh, people also won't think we're as crazy for having five EQ blocks, because I, I, you know, trust me, everybody, I, all the comments on YouTube where you didn't have to use that many again. And like I said, it doesn't matter how many times you give a disclaimer in the video that there's probably other ways to do this. You're going to always have some... Uh, lovely comments telling you that everything you're doing is wrong. So uh, the joys of, of putting uh, things out on YouTube. Anyways, um, I hope that was kind of clear. I hope that helped some folks to understand IRs a little bit more. And again, like I said, I'm not a, uh, professing to be some sort of IR expert. Um, I know enough to get one of these done. The same thing can be done with your speaker cabs as well, right? It would just be instead of processing that sweep uh, test tone that we uh, created uh, through native, um, we would send that out of our interface and through our uh, 
power amp, a clean power amp into our speaker cab and we'd have to capture it with a microphone placed properly so you're capturing that whole path and then re-record that back into your DAW. It's a little, obviously a little bit more complicated, a little more equipment involved, uh, a few more steps, but it's essentially the same process. And once you have your, your processed test tone through your cabinet and everything, you'd go through the same uh, uh, series of steps with uh, Voxango Deconvolver and you would create your IR and then you just come, it's, it's quite a simple process. There's really nothing to it uh, once you understand how to do it. Um, so we could go through and do this with any of those patches I've done now. You know, I did a Brian May one recently for Bohemian Rhapsody, which had some EQs on it. I did a Metallica one, Enter Sandman, a few other ones. And any of those ones that even, even if you have like two or three EQs, you know, which is not uncommon. Some people are using a parametric, some people are using, uh, maybe uh, one or two graphic equalizers. And you could take that step if you find you're running out of space in your paths or your blocks or DSP possibly, and uh, slap those in there. I'm assuming that, you know, that simple little IR block is going to use less DSP than those five EQ blocks. I don't know. That would be for somebody uh, who's much more knowledgeable about that side of the DSP usage than I am. But uh, so what do you guys think? I hope that helped. I hope that was an interesting video. Um, I hope it made sense and I hope I explained myself right on, on all of those things. Uh, I may actually uh, add a link to that IR if anybody else wants to test this with the patch because this, this patch limelight is up on custom tone. And if you wanted to take it and just kind of experiment to see if you hear a difference between that, I, I'll, throw, I'll throw a link up to that on my Amazon Drive or something like that uh, and put it in the, uh, in the comments or in the uh, description below. All right, so thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the kind words and the support everybody's been giving me. Uh, very, very nice to, uh, to hear that uh, so many folks are finding the videos useful. I really do appreciate uh, you guys letting me know. And uh, I'll be back again soon with some more uh, hopefully interesting videos. <laughs> all right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, ciao for now, and we'll talk soon.